Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to do some data cleaning and data exploration before performing sentiment analysis. And then I will show you how to do sentiment analysis using some of the pre-built packages. Uh, they will be called Fader and Text Blob package. And then in the next video, I will show you how to train your own model. Uh, there we won't be using any pre-trained models. We will train our own one and make predictions using our own trained model. So let's first of all uh, import the packages we need. Uh, this is the regular expression package. This is the pandas package, which you should be familiar with, very familiar with. And NLTK is basically a platform which has a lot of tools for text processing and also a lot of different um, packages that you can uh, do sentiment analysis with. So let's just import it first. Okay, so uh, we're going to read in some comments uh, and these comments I have scraped from the Reddit API. Okay, so let's have a look at what the comments data frame look like first, just to get an idea. So we have the comments text here, the timestamp, the number of upvotes, and a key, which we won't worry about for now. Um, and let's have a look at what type of cleaning we need. So if we choose the comments at uh, row number 10, or well, actually that will be row number 11, we will see that this is the comment, this is the text comment at row number 11. And we can also see that there's a link here, and we don't want the link, uh, because it is very unlikely that the link uh, will be a good indicator of whether a sentiment is going to be a positive sentiment, uh, whether it's going to be a negative one or a neutral one. So we want to remove the link. And that way it makes it easier when we run our pre-built packages for the pre-built package to figure out what are the keywords uh, in the text and, um, uh, and use it to predict sentiment. So how do we remove this link? Well, that we will have to use the regular expression. So what does a regular expression here is showing us is basically showing anything that starts with HTTP, we want to find it. And this bracket, uh, we, we want to see if this bracket exists. That's why this question mark is here. This question mark means that the bracket can be there or it cannot or it can be not there. Um, it doesn't matter. But what we're actually looking for is anything that starts with HTTP and this capital S plus captures everything that is not a space. So words, letters, numbers, it will capture everything as long as it's not a space. And then we're going to replace this, uh, whatever this um, item is that starts with HTTP with a blank field. Uh, so we're basically essentially just removing it. So let's see how it works. Okay, so we're just going to uh, run this. And as you can see, uh, the link here has been removed. So next, let's see what other cleaning we need to do. So if we have a look down here, we can, uh, well, if we have a look at row number 10, we can see that the text contains these new line characters. And these new line characters need to be removed because if they are there, sometimes they might link two words together and then the two words will be linked as you know together as a single word. And then when we run our pre-built package, the package will see it as a single word and it won't pick up the uh, well, it'll treat it as a single word rather than two words. So it will actually um, 
make the pre-built package work less efficiently. So we want to remove them and replace it with preferably a space. So there are different ways to remove them. You can either use regular expressions as above, or in this case, I've chosen to just use one of the inbuilt functions of NLTK. So if we just have a look here, so this is the sample, this is the text um, is stored in this variable called sample here. If we just uh, run this function, word tokenize function on sample, it will look like this. Uh, basically, word tokenize just tokenizes the text into individual words. So how is a word? So it becomes, you know, uh, just a single item in this list here. About is treated as a word, and then so on and so forth. And then it recognizes that these escape sequences, these new lines, are not a word. So you don't find them here. So that's how I chose to remove them. You can use regular expressions if you want to. Uh, and after um, running the word tokenize, it becomes a list format. If you want to convert it back to uh, the text format, which is you know just a piece of string, then you can use the join function. So it basically, this join function takes in a list and the list, um, it just joins everything in the list together into a single string. And here you can see that the new line has been removed. So that would be all the cleaning that's required before running the pre-built packages. The pre-built packages are quite powerful, so you don't really need to do too much pre-processing for it. Uh, the next stuff we would want to look at is bigrams. So what bigrams is, bi means two basically. So basically it means two words that occur together frequently. Okay, so I'll just give an example, right? So if there's a sentence um, like this, more is said than done is said than are there any two words uh, which occur uh, right after one another more frequently than other? Then it will be is and said because is and said occurred once here, and then is and said occurred again here. So said is after is, okay, and then said and then uh, occurs once here, and then said and then occurs a second time here. So this and said is considered a bigram and it turned up twice, uh, same as said and then. So if that is confusing, I can just basically run this and then you will see what this is all about. Okay, so here we are going to import a lot of um, functions from the NLTK platform. Uh, there are quite a few lines of code here, but the only uh, parts you really need to um, pay attention to is this one here, because this is where you uh, change it to the variable name which you stored um, that piece of text you want to analyze. So in this case, the piece of text we want to analyze is stored in sample, so I'm putting sample here. And then we need to pay attention here. So we, this is a filter, right? So we want to find the bigrams, you know, the, the two words which occurred one after the other, and they need to occur more than two times um, in order, well, for, for this to, uh, for the program to find it, right? So we want to look at all bigrams that appear two times at least or more. Uh, you can change it to three, you, you can change it to whatever um, number you want. But here we are looking at two because we know for certain that is and said, and said and then occurs twice. And over here we can filter and decide how many bigrams to return. We can just say one or we can say ten, uh, you, you, again you can decide. 
if you say one, then it will only return one bigram. If it returns, um, if you if you say ten, then it will return ten bigram. So if I just run it, you will see immediately what it does, right? So there we go. Uh, it finds the bigram is in set, and it also finds the bigram set and then. Okay. So and it finds them because they occur two times at least. If we put one here. Then it will basically find all combinations of bigrams less in that sentence. So if I change it to one, then you will see it basically has all combinations of bigrams in that sentence. So why do we have to do this whole thing? I mean, we don't have to. Um, you know, if we would just want to run some pre-built packages or over the comment starter frame we don't really need to do this but it's good to just run it because it's not very hard and it gives you an idea of what the common words are within the text you know it gives you a you know just a slight understanding of the text and if you want to uh, visualize it or maybe you know visualize it in power bi you can do it and it gives uh, you know the audience you're presenting to a better understanding of your text. So we just try on uh, you know the first 10,000 rows of our data frame. So remember we have a comment data frame that we have uh, you know read into pandas before. So we we'll just try it on the first 10,000 rows. Right. So here I'm selecting the first 10,000 rows. And here I'm indicating that I'm selecting the column reply. Uh, why am I doing that? Well, recall that reply contains the text that we want. Okay, so that's why I'm um, selecting the column reply. And what this business here is all about uh, is basically putting all of the replies. So this reply, this reply, this reply for the first 10,000 replies. It joins them into a single string and then it separates each reply by a full stop or period. So if I just run that and if I just highlight to you guys what it looks like, then I can just, um, uh, maybe I can do something like this. Okay, so as you can see, it combines the text from each um, row into a single string. All we need now is humanist bodies. For a moment, I read careless driver. All we need now is human bodies. There's a full stop because there's a separator. For a moment, I read careless driver and so on and so forth. Okay, I think you get the idea now. And then once we got them all into a piece of string, we need to word tokenize it. Uh, why do we have to word tokenize it? Well, because remember that um, the bigrams taken a list, okay? And right now we got a piece, we got a string. And in order to make the string to break it into a list of individual words, we need to run the function word tokenize. So we we'll just do that. Okay, it took a little bit of time. And then I wrote a, uh, you know, bigram function here, which will return the bigrams. Um, and then there's the parameters, uh, minimum frequency, and how many bigrams we want to return. So let's just say that we want to look at the bigrams that appear at least 10 times. And we want to look at the top 10 bigrams, okay? Okay, so as you can see, these are the top 10 bigrams. Um, these, the first two doesn't really give us a lot of insight into this. And then it gets a bit interesting a bit later on. For example, fossil fuels occurs quite often. Fast majority occurs quite often. Black Panther, Mario Kart, social media, of course. The, these bigrams all make sense because these words, you know, is 
it's reasonable that they occur together. You know, it's, uh, Mario Kart, that, that means something. Mario might mean one thing and Kart might mean another, but Mario Kart together means, you know, a Nintendo game. So you, you kind of get a feel for the data and, uh, you know, an understanding of what are some of the common, um, you know, messages or bigrams by running this um, function here. So let's look at word clouds next. Again, word cloud is a good way to visualize the most uh, fre uh, frequently occurring words in a piece of text. And I'm just going to import some packages. Okay, so um, again, we're selecting the first 10,000 rows because this is just a sample and same thing here we are making it into a piece of um, string. Over here we're defining a color function which we will need for the word cloud a bit later. You can just use exactly the same color function as me. It doesn't really matter. The only uh, part you need to pay attention to here would be the stop words over here and also the sample over here. So why do we need to pay attention to the stop words? Is because stop words are words that are commonly occurring. Uh, for example, is or am. The word is or the word am are uh, very frequently occurring in English and they really don't uh, add a lot of value to our, you know, it doesn't give us a Good understanding of what the text is talking about because they're really common and they're there just to make a sentence grammatically correct. So we don't really care about those words, right? So we call them stop words and if we attribute the stop words to a variable and we um, put it into the parameter here, then our word cloud will ignore those stop words. So if I just run that, oh yes, and the other thing you need to know is sample. Uh, why? Because over here, this is the input to the word cloud, right? If you want to generate a word cloud, you can always just use this code, but you do need to change this one here to the input variable. So if I just show you what the word cloud looks like, and this is what it looks like, okay? So the bigger means the more frequently the word occurs in the text. And it's not a simple count of which word um, occurs the most uh, in the text. It also, it's, the word cloud also takes into account um, the more than one word. So something like bigrams or trigrams, words that occur frequently, whether by themselves or together, are taken into account when the word cloud is produced. And but if we don't want that to happen, um, then we can always say collocations equal to false. If we set that parameter, then it only looks at individual words. So it will only select the word which occurs the most frequently rather than you know groups of words that occur most frequently. And also we can add to the stop words here. For example, we don't care about Tesla, the word, because um, we know we are looking at data about Tesla and having that here doesn't really give us any real insight to it. So we can write here, So what, what, what's going on here? We're just adding the word Tesla to the stop word and then passing in the stop words to the word cloud function here so that it will ignore the word Tesla. So when we run it again, Tesla won't come up anymore because uh, we've branded Tesla as a stop word. And because we set collocations equal to false, it will only select the word that occur most frequently, the individual word, uh, rather than a group of words. So the word cloud would look different. Yep, as you can see, the word cloud is different and um, mainly Tesla is gone. So when you visualize it, you can always 
play around with the stop words and just add or remove um, words which you think are unnecessary to you know uh, which which doesn't really add any insights to the data okay so now I guess I'm going to cover the pre-built packages uh, they are called fader and text blob so they are two separate package and I will start by showing you the fader package first okay so we will import the fader package so how do we do that basically you can just copy this line okay this will import everything you need to run the fader package and here we are initializing a function or well, an anal analyze a function and I will just show you immediately what it does and you will immediately understand what is going on here so we uh, kind of stored the function into something called SID so if we do this okay oops 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 hold on a second uh, yes I need to do this so if we do that then we can see already what it does right I mean this shows that um, zero is a proportion right so none of the words in I am very happy is identified as being negative uh, about 33 percent of the words in I am very happy is identified as neutral and 66 percent of the words is identified as very as positive and compound basically combines the values from these three figures and give you an overall sentiment and if this compound um, value is positive then it means it's a positive sentiment according to fader and if it is negative then it's a negative sentiment so if we change that to this then you can see that it changed to a being a negative sentiment now we can add sentiment scores to words if we want to so for example say we found a word here that we find occurs very frequently and we want to penalize the word so every time say people comes up we want to make it a negative sentiment we have the flexibility to do that using the fader package first you create a, a dictionary so this is a dictionary okay uh, and we say people and we assign the score okay I mean I went a bit overboard here by assigning a negative 1000 score but you can assign it whatever score you want and then you run the function uh, well sid.lexicon.update and then you put in here the dictionary you created you can make more than one uh, people comes so if you do that and then we can say there are some people as you can see it's basically fully negative I mean 99% of this sentence here is considered to be negative and why is that there are some people doesn't seem to be a negative statement well that's because we just updated the lexicon here okay we updated people with a massively negative score and likewise we say uh, updated cars with a very positive score so we just say I see cars then you see it's very positive so we have the flexibility to change um, the scores of each word uh, based on well based on sometimes what we see in the word cloud what we see in the bigrams or if you just have some domain knowledge uh, and if you feel like it you can change it but otherwise you can just leave the lexicon alone I mean it's not really that important okay so let's have a look now I will um, show you how to run 
the fader package across the entire data frame, uh, which should be very straightforward because it's just using things that you used in phase one already. First, I want to subset the data frame because um, the data frame is quite huge. It has about 270,000 rows. And this is just a demonstration, right? I'm just going to subset it to make it a smaller data frame. So the data frame that I subsetted is uh, 70,000 rows. And here I'm just going to clean it. Now you're going to find that these are nothing new here. You remember this regular expression is the same one that we use to remove the links. And you remove this, I mean, do you remember this join and then word tokenize function? It was used to remove those new line characters that um, were linking two words together. So nothing new here. I'm just applying these functions on the reply column to clean it up before running sentiment analysis. Okay, so I just didn't pause it so that you kind of get an idea of how long it took. It took about 30, 30 seconds to run set, um, the two functions over 70,000 rows. And let's have a look. So over here, uh, we are going to, I mean, you should know this by now, but I'll again explain what is going on here, right? We're creating new columns in the data frame, okay? so. I mean, if you have a look right now, the data frame only has reply, time, upvote, and key. But we're adding new columns to it. We're adding a new column called negative, neutral, positive, and compound. And uh, you realize the names here are same as uh, the names here. Uh, and they have to be the same because um, that's the only way to do it, um, to create new columns this way. So we are creating a new column for each of the value here. And what goes into the new, uh, what goes into each of the new columns are basically the negative, neutral, positive and compound scores of each reply. Okay. So for example, if the first reply has 10% negative, 10% neutral, and 80% uh, positive, then we will have the first row having um, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.8 here. So that's what this is doing, right? And this lambda function I've basically shown you in phase one already, and we'll just see what it, uh, what it gives us. All right, so it does take a while. It took about 40 seconds on my poor laptop, um, but now it's done. We can have a look at um, what, it, what, what it actually did. So as I said, it added the new columns here, and um, we can see the sentiments of each reply. So the first reply, uh, the fader package deemed it to be neutral. Uh, so it has a score of zero. <laughs> uh, the second one has a, 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 the fader package decided that it's positive. Uh, and then the third one it decided it is neutral. So, I mean, if you really want to do a quick and easy job, you can just ignore these three columns and just look immediately at the compound column. Um, you know, to decide, oh, if it's zero is neutral, if it's more than zero is positive, if it's negative, then it's a negative sentiment. You know, if you want, if you don't want to spend too much time tuning in anything, then you can do that. 
otherwise, uh, I mean, or if you really want to dig into it, you can look at um, the negative, neutral, and positive proportions of the replies and maybe uh, set thresholds. So maybe instead of zero being positive, you can set 0 0.2 and above as being positive. Uh, it's up to you um, how you want to do it, but you can always do that. You have the flexibility to do that. So now let's look at the text blob package. Again, just run these import statements as they are. I mean, that's probably the only way you're going to import them anyway. And then over here, we are um, setting the analyzer uh, into this thing called TBA here. And uh, how it works is, well, it's pretty uh, clear, right? I mean, I'm just going to run this, and then you kind of can see how it works. So there we go. So the output this thing gives us is quite similar, right? I mean, we have a positive. Um, you know, score, a negative score, and then a classification, which is a bit different because that's kind of a compound score, and this immediately classifies it for us, whether it's positive, negative, or neutral. And it's quite good. Uh, it picked up that this statement here is a negative statement, and it's quite true. You know, my life is a frictionless slide downhill. It's quite negative okay so okay so we kind of can see how it works right so we will just again uh, create a subset of the data frame and then apply the cleaning steps removing links removing you know escape sequences nothing new here Okay, so after the cleaning steps have been applied, again, we are going to do the same thing. Running pre-built packages isn't too hard, there's nothing new here, right? So we're going to create three new columns. And over here, we do need to pay attention though, uh, because, because previously, if we take a look at um, the beta package, what it actually returns is a dictionary that's like this. And if it's already in a dictionary form, then all we need to do is call the pd.series, and then we can um, create these new columns. But over here, this, this thing here is not really a dictionary, okay? I mean, dictionary have curly braces. There's no curly braces. So we can tell that it's not a dictionary. So that's why it's a little bit different here. Um, instead of you know uh, just calling the function, we have to uh, basically extract each element by themselves. So element zero, element zero is the classification. So we say classification. Uh, so we're creating a dictionary here. So you see these curly braces. Oops, because it doesn't return a dictionary, we are creating it ourselves and passing it to the pandas series function so that we can create these columns. Might seem complicated, but to be honest, you should, I mean, you kind of encounter this stuff in um, phase one, so I'm quite confident that you guys should understand this. Um, and we're extracting the first uh, first element here, the second element here as positive, and the third element here as negative. So we're just going to run that, and then we will see what it gives us. Okay, it does take a while, but um, it's done, so let's have a look at what it produced. So there we go. Um, hold on, okay, classification will show us what um, this uh, model, well, the text block model classifies the sentiment as. So, all, so you can see there's already a little bit of differences between um, the fader package and this one here, the text block package. So it classified all three of the, all the first three as positive, while the fader package only classified the second one as positive. 
And I mean, looking at this already, it does seem that um, the fader package is more accurate. And in general, if I have to use a pre-built package, uh, especially for online, uh, you know, messaging, um, messaging type of text sentiment analysis, I would use the fader package. And um, but of course, just have a play with it to see which one seems to perform better. Um, but we can already tell that there are differences. That's all for this video. Um, and in the next video, I will show you how to train your own classifier.